Jack Butland is almost a Rangers player. Um, I think Palace didn't want to take up the year option, so it looks like he's going to sign for Rangers on a free. Um, your thoughts? I mean, we've kind of touched on it before, but now that it looks like it's about he's about to join, what what do you make of that? Yeah, I think it'll be a good signing. It's probably somebody that they need through the door with that experience after losing Alan McGregor, obviously retiring. They need someone with that sort of ability. And this is a guy who's been around the block. He's obviously been at loan at Manchester United. I know he's not played a lot, but that experience, he's played in the Premier League. He's been in with England. He brings all those char characteristics, can't even say it, that, <laughs> that you need for a goalkeeper. Uh, very much like Joe Hart. I see yeah. him that kind of way. Maybe lost his waist ever so slightly, but you know there's an exceptional goalkeeper in there. So I think it would be an excellent appointment. Yeah, I actually think, I remember, I think I was listening to the radio and they were talking about how I think Joe Hart had actually played less games over like the same period over Butland. I think he Butland has actually played more more actual games than Joe Hart had when he came in Celtic and he got on absolutely fine. So Yeah, but that's the thing with Joe Hart. You know he was an exceptional goalkeeper. There was no getting away from that. He, he just kind of lost his way a touch, not yeah. really through any fault of his own. And I think Butlin's kind of the same mould. Yeah, makes sense. Um yeah, and one of the one of the other names that's the that's been floating around the rumour mill at Rangers is Hadji Wright, um, who seems to be kind of Beale's top replacement for Morelos. But I think his he's valued at around about seven million. But you know, as you just said, four and a half, five million for a player in Scotland is, you know, on the high end. Do you think that Rangers will be looking to to kind of bring that price down. Of course, I mean they'll try and get it for as low as possible. Obviously, for players coming in, you, you know Rangers and Celtic they do look at the markets for free players and people out of contracts and, and things like that. But as I've shown in the past with the likes of Ken, if there's someone there that's available, that's say a proven goal scorer or somebody who's a match winner who can change things for them who can tip the balance in their direction, then they will pay that money. Rangers have made mistakes in the past, obviously, with the likes of Morelos and Kent running down their contracts. I can't see them allowing that to happen again. But yes, it is a lot of money. But as I said, if it's someone that can make the difference, then I'm sure they'll be willing to pay that little bit extra. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, and also just speaking of a different Hadji, Yanis Hadji, um, his dad, I think it's his agent as well, has come out and said that, you know, he thinks he would be suited to the style of play in Spain. Um, you know, there's obviously he has been out injured for a while, came back into the team, just laterally scored that goal. But what do you what do you make of that that assessment? Do you think that he would fit in in Spain? Do you think he's well suited where he is just now? I think both. I think, look, he's suited to where he is. I mean, it's been difficult for him. He's been out for a long period of time with a serious injury. Uh, yes, the, the Scottish... Premier League is, is very aggressive, uh, especially when you're away from home. The Spanish League, obviously I've played in it, I know what it's like, it, it, it's very technical, uh, there's not so much contact and if there is, it's a foul normally. So of course his style, he's a technical player, of course would suit that. It's maybe a little bit slower paced as well, I think that's probably the one thing that he's missing to make him that elite player, is that little bit of pace. So of course it will suit him, but I think Bill likes him. He'll want to keep him within the squad, but it's, it's different if he's unhappy, then you'd maybe have to look at different options. But we'll have to see after pre-season where he's heads at. Yeah, definitely. And one of the other one of the other potential um, exits this summer is Glenn Kamara. We spoke about him in January. There was kind of chat that he was maybe leaving. He kind of turned things around a little bit, but he's supposedly like looking at his options now. Do you think that... Now, after you've seen him the second half of the season, you think he is one who could go this summer? Well, he's definitely fell down the pecking order. I mean, this is a this is a player that, that Michael Beale really likes, especially mm -hmm. from his, his, his previous time as well. When he comes back in, he brings him back into the fold. I think he has got a lot to offer. I mean, he's not been at his best but then again you can put that down to he's not had the minutes that probably he's needed to, to kind of get there so again he's probably another one that they'll be given Michael B will want to give him the, the pre-season to really see 
what he's capable of. Is his head on it? Can he get the best out of him? And if not, then I think they will look to move him on. But he's probably one right on the borderline. I mean, it could go either way. could stay, but there's a, a massive chance of him leaving as well. Yeah, makes sense. Um, yeah, and one of, the, one of the other players who's attracting a bit of interest is Ben Davies. He obviously only signed very recently, but supposedly Stoke are keen on on a potential deal for him. Surely he's not going to be tempted to to leave this early on and you know for a club like Stoke when he's got the potential of Champions League football soon enough. Yeah, I would hope not. Look, he struggled when he first came, obviously with injury. He was signed for for decent money, obviously for Rangers and the injury really kind of hampered his his start at Ibrook. So it, it was a real shame. But I thought he started coming on to a game. Uh, obviously the second half of the season. I have you know I've got a feeling that with the the players that Michael Beale's bringing in, what he's got there, that he could possibly play three at the back. I mean, you look at the likes of Sterling, you've got Goldson and Suter, I thought, has done really well towards the end of the season. And then obviously Davis, he'll, he'll need other options. So unless he's planning on bringing somebody in, obviously he's got Leon King there as well, who's a young boy. But unless he's maybe planning on bringing somebody in, I don't see why they would want to let him go so early. Yeah. Makes sense. There's no point when you, if you don't have to sell them, why would you, I suppose? Um, yeah, we spoke last week as well about Steven Gerrard being linked with the Leeds job. He is now being linked with the Leicester job. Um, there, obviously, I think they've they've announced a couple of, of departures as well, end of contracts, etc. They're obviously, you know, set to lose some of their, their big name players. Do you think that that potential loss of the likes of Madison, Barnes, Telemans has already confirmed that he's leaving, so you etc. that that makes the job itself slightly less appealing, which you've maybe got less decent players to work with, I suppose. Exactly, yeah, of course it would, because you think they were never going to keep all those players, let's not kid ourselves on. Yeah. I mean, as soon as they get relegated, the likes of Barnes, Madison, they were always going to go, Telemans ran down his contract anyway, so it would be less appealing because if you kept all those players that we've mentioned, and by the way, the seven that they let go, the likes of Sion Cho and, and all those, Johnny Evans is still talking about extending, but it's not done yet. It's obviously going to be harder. I mean, the championship is a real tough league. Uh, they'll all improve next season. And obviously you've got the big, like the likes of Southampton and stuff that will want to be trying to get back up as well. So it's going to be hard. So it's going to make it difficult for the manager, whoever goes in there. But, I think it's a it's a plus for Steven Gerrard to be kind of mentioned with these teams like a Leeds who's a big team, uh, Leicester is obviously a big team, so he'll feel that he could go in there and add something and put his own style onto it and probably get the best out of the players that are already there also. Mm -hmm. And I suppose the potential, you know, to take a club from the champ to back up to the Prem is a nice achievement to have on your list as well. Of course it is. I mean, you want to win things, you want to win leagues, whether it be via the, the playoffs or straight up. So it's something that I think will look attractive to him. And because of the size of the teams as well, I mean, no disrespect, there's obviously some lesser teams in the championship that, that might not suit him uh, moving forward. But I think these two are definitely Premier League sides that have had poor seasons and really will be looking to come up first, first go at it. I know that's hard because, like I said, I've been there. It's very difficult to do, but I'm sure he'll feel that he's got the, the know-how to get it done. Yeah, definitely. It'll be, be an interesting one to see how it plays out. Um, since we last spoke, Rangers have confirmed two signings, um, Kieran Dull and Dujon Sterling, midfielder and right back. I mean, your thoughts on, on those two new additions to the squad? Yeah, I think they're good and I think they tick all the boxes for, for Michael Beale moving forward and what his plans are, obviously, for the squad. He wants that kind of young, more energetic, probably, footballer that he can kind of mould and shape into what he sees fits for, for the team. So I think, obviously, Sterling coming in as a kind of right wing back that he can play multiple positions. I think Tavernier needs competition moving forward. I think it's a good signing. Uh, and Dow, obviously, I think... He knows Cantwell really well, so I think it would have been a good conversation for them to have and, and let them know the kind of lie of the land and 
look, he's an he's an experienced player now for for still being so young. He's played at a really good level, and I think he can really come into the Rangers team and, and kick on uh, and, and become even better. Yeah, and I mean, how much of a draw do you think that is for Dull to have had Cantwell there, who's played, you know, for a substantial period of time now, to like, you know, talk to and and get the lay of the land and stuff. Yeah, it's absolutely perfect. I think there's nothing better if if you're going into a league or a football team and, and you don't really know it, but there's a player that you've come kind of through the ranks with or whatever, you, you can always phone them, rely on them to tell you what it's all about. And I think Cantwell's really hit the ground running. He knows what that feeling's like to to score goals at Ibrox, to play in big games already. And I think for what they're trying to achieve moving forward, these are the kind of young, hungry signings that you need.